Welcome to the introduction to the Maxis Compact. My name is Mark Commons and I'm part of the development team behind this controller, which is built up around modularity. The Maxis Compact consists of the following modules. You have the playback modules, the master module, the Cerebrum and the programmer. Each of them are connected with a simple USB and power connection, which I show you here. You see the power connection and USB. That's how simple it's been connected inside. The Cerebrum module is really the heart of the console. It contains an industrial computer with a built-in touchscreen. And internally, there's only a few connections going to the rest of the modules, like USB and Ethernet for the ongoing connections. The Cerebrum module can also be used as a standalone computer, for example, for buildings or cruise ships. Moving on to the programming module, this is the keypad area, which you use for calling up lights or groups of lights. Above it, what's new is five programmable LCD buttons, where you can put all your favorite buttons inside and your functions, and you can map them into different banks. These are the attribute groups, where you select groups of channels, and the individual channels are mapped on the digital bells. To choose between the normal functionality of, of the channels and the effect channels, you have this CV button where you swap between the first and the next four of the bells. What's also new is the last next buttons, where you can go quickly throughout your lights. And this is the trackball area, where you have the mouse functionality, the left and right mouse button. And the trackball can have two different functions. Now it is blinking, so it means it's in pan tilt mode, or you can use it as a standalone mouse. On the left side, you see the two playback modules each containing five faders, which are behaving like one bank. The scroll wheel goes through the banks. On the lower side, you have an extra go button, a back button, release button. Each of the faders contain a dedicated go button, pause back button. The LCD button shows you the label of the cue list, and what's new is an extra flash button. And then there is this small module, which is the master module. It's containing two faders. The first one is the Grandmaster, and then you have the Flashmaster, each containing their own dedicated flash buttons. Let's move on to see the connections on the back of the console. The power supply is auto sensing, which means you can use it anywhere in the world. On the top here, you have three different connections, and they are coming from the Cerebrum module. On the left, you have the Ether DMX output, where you can go up to 32 universes. You have an extra USB connection, which you can use for an external touchscreen. And you can connect an external uh, TFT or VGA monitor on this uh, VGA connection. A second network connection is available for remote network between Maxis and Maxidia controllers. Four different DMX outputs, a DMX input, and you have two wing connections. The console also has audio in and output. You have the microphone input, the line inputs, line outputs, the MIDI in and outputs, which have been used for triggering MIDI commands or also for MIDI show control. Timecode is available through SEMTI or to VITC. All the desk lights of the console are individually dimmable. And for your convenience, we also added on the left and the right side of the console some extra desk light connections. For the second part of the video, we're going to show you how easy it is to program this desk. We're going to patch a light, program a cue, and show you some effects. Once the console has booted, this is what you see. On the touchscreen, there are three options. Create a new show, load an existing show, or continue with the show which is loaded previously. To be able to show you the patch, we're going to create a new show. It asks you if you want to create, yes. And then you can type in a name, which we give demo, and we press OK. On the first DMX line, we have connected this Mac 2K profile, 
which we're gonna patch now. To enter the patch, we have to go to the menu, and the menu button is located here on the programmer. Once in the menu, one of the buttons here is Edit Patch, which we need now to enter the patching, and it's loading up an empty window since we loaded a new show. We have to go and add a type, and the first pop-up box is showing you that previously there were no lights patched, so there's none to choose out, so we have to go to the fixture library. On the left here you see all the possible manufacturers, we have to choose the Martin, and we have to go to a Mac 2K profile, so I press the M, and Mac 2K profile, and I press OK. Now I can directly give a patch number by saying on the keypad, add one, enter. And as soon as it's patched now, the light will respond to it. The light is patched, so we can close the patching and close the menu. Now we're entering the normal working mode of the desk and to choose out of different windows you have these buttons above the screen which are also activated on the touch screen and these two arrows swapping between the first eight and the next eight screen views. So now we go to screen view 11 which shows you that there was a Mac 2K profile patched. In this case we patched only one light. It has a Mac 2K profile and the fixture number is 1. There are two possible ways to select a light, either through the touchscreen, on and off, or by the keypad by selecting fixture 1, enter. So now the fixture is selected and we are ready to start programming. To be able to see the values in the programmer, I'm going to go to screen view 10 which is showing the programmer together with the attributes. The programmer is showing number one, so that means that fixture one is actually selected. To be able to handle all the attributes of the fixture, we have the LCD buttons and the individual attributes. And each of the LCD buttons contains a grouping of channels, like for example, pan tilt, color, gobos, and so on. Each time that I select one of these LCD buttons, the attributes which are inside that group are becoming active on the digital belts. Above each digital belt, there is a dedicated button which can be used for calling up direct access. Like for example, I'm going to go to intensity, I'm going to double tap on the shutter channel, which is calling up all the direct access of that channel. Since I need to start the lamp, I select lamp on. The next thing I'm going to do is turn on the intensity, either by pressing the full button or by using the digital belt. I'm selecting now pan tilt, I'm going to move it up to the wall. Like this. I'm going to go and choose a color. with the color picker, selecting a gobo using the direct axis and putting the beam, the focus. This I'm going to record into a cue list, so I press record and an LCD button. I press the name demo and when I hit return it will load the fader with the first queue of my queue list called demo. So now the first queue is programmed. Up to the second queue, I'm going to move it to the other side of the wall, changing the color with the belts to a magenta, and record it as a second queue by pressing record and LCD button of the queue list. And now we have two queues in the queue list. To start playing the queue list, I'm going to clear the programmer by pressing two times the clear so the light goes back to home position and I'm now going to press a go on the queue list so it goes to the first queue and the second go will go to the second queue. Time to show you some of the effects in the Maxis Compact. Any channel of a fixture can have an effect and 
to show you one of the cool ones, I'm going to choose the pan tilt. I'm going to swap to the effect channels with the CV button. And now these four attributes are applied to the effects engine. The first two are the swing for the pan and the tilt. The third channel is the speed. And the fourth channel is to apply any of the possible figures. So now I'm going to double tap this channel. And then on the touch screen, you can see all the possible figures. To choose a simple one, I'm going to take the circle. And the only thing I need to do now is give some swing for the pan, for the tilt, and give a speed. So now the fixture will start moving, and that's how easy it is. So now we're going to record this into the third queue of the queue list. To be able to view the queue list, I'm going to double tap the clear button. So the fixture goes back in home position. And now we're going to run the first queue, the second queue, and the third queue will change the gobble and goes to the pan tilt effects. For this part of the video, we're going to show you how to maintain the console. And what you see in front of me is the empty shell of the console. I've taken out all the modules, and the modules are laying here. And with four screws, it's taken out. How it's been connected? Each of the modules have, have a dedicated power and USB connection. And we don't use the normal USB connection, but the RJ45 instead for safety. So each of these modules have that. The programming module has one extra cable, which is a cable which is going to the master module. And then the Cerebrum has its dedicated power and data connection. The power supply is located below the Cerebrum and we are using an ultra quiet power supply so it can be used in, uh, in theaters. But actually it's a standard power supply. So in case that you have a damaged power supply, you can go into a shop or take your computer apart and replace it with the connections of your normal power supply. Cleaning the console is really easy once the modules are out because it's a really open frame now. So I can use, for example, some uh, compressed air and clean up the console. The same for the modules. Once they're out, they're really easy accessible. To clean the fader, you need to blow air from the inside of the module because the fader is angled on the PCB. Let's put the Maxis Compact back together with all the modules. I'm going to take the master module first. There's only one connection. The top playback module. Bring in the power. USB. The other playback module. Programmer, which has three connections. It has the power. The connection for the master module. And the final module to place in is the Cerebrum. First the power connection, then the data connection. And please remember to close the two clips for safety. And last but not least, use the Allen key to mount all the screws of the panels. And once you have tightened all the screws, you're ready to use the console again.
This has been a brief introduction to the Maxxis Compact. If you have further questions, please contact your Martin dealer.